Full transparency here. A few weeks ago, I received an email from PowerSmart. They said, hey JB, we wanna send you some of our snowblowers. I said, sure, but only if you want an authentic and honest review, send them my way. And here they are. One 24 inch two-stage gas snowblower and one 24 inch two-stage cordless battery powered snowblower. In this video, we're gonna be unboxing the 24 inch gas powered snowblower. Let's slice this box open. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And remember, if you're feeling the vibe and you wanna be part of the tribe, subscribe. Just so we're clear here, I will be assembling this snowblower as is right out of the box. I won't be doing any extra steps beyond what's stated in the owner's manual. <gasps> Warning, do not discard this box. In the unlikely event this unit needs to be returned for service, original packaging is required. That's a big box. What am I gonna do with a box this big? I guess I could store some patio furniture in it or something. Let's open her up. Lots to unpack here, let's get at it. So we got a choke knob, our owner's manual. Real quick, here's a glimpse of our owner's manuals and there's actually three of them. Here's our quick setup guide, we'll be referring to this quite a bit. We have our operator's manual and then our instruction manual. Boy, they really know how to pack a box here, holy cannoli. So now we're kind of at this point here, I'm noticing that all these components of this snowblower are all interconnected one way or another. So what I'm gonna have to do, even though the box says do not discard, I'm gonna have to cut this box open and pull this machine out this way in order to avoid lifting this whole unit up and all the assorted pieces, that way I don't hurt my back. Time to slice. The box has a nice ding right here on the side anyways. Drop her down. Here's our chute. We got some wood here on the bottom. We got some zip ties. We're gonna clip these off. Good, pull that right out. We got our crank lever. We got one wheel, another wheel. Let's see if we can pull her out now. Right here, we have one of our drive linkages. Pulling you forward. All right, here, let me bring you in here. Take a look at this. Is this thing leaking oil? Or is that a protective coating they maybe sprayed on this thing? Looks like a little bit came off here. Here is the actual motor oil that they give you. This is 5W30 full synthetic. It looks to be full. It looks like we even got some leakage down here. So I'm gonna have to investigate where that came from. This little black bag here. I believe this is all the nuts and bolts. Oh, these are our casters. Good, we're gonna have to attach those on the bottom. We have our motor oil. And here is our scraper tool. And that's it for the box. I'm gonna start by clipping off some stuff here. I'm gonna take this saran wrap off Next, unpack this chute. Now, in case you may not remember, a few years ago, I actually bought one of these and then ramped it up with an impeller kit. And I think they may have upgraded their chute here, which is a good thing. Set that aside. So now that we kind of have everything out here, let's take a look at our first step in the instruction booklet. First step, install the lower handle. Easy, let's do it. Looks like we're gonna need a half inch socket. I'm gonna throw this on my impact driver. This will make quick work of it. Remove the bolts. We're gonna move our handle into place, insert the screws, insert the other side, and let's send them in. Next on the quick setup guide, it says we're gonna install the tires. Let's get at it. We're gonna remove our pin, out drops the bolt. From here, we're gonna place on the tire. We wanna make sure it goes on the right way. The arrows here on the tread are gonna point forward. That's the way it's gotta go on. From here, we're gonna lift up on the unit and slide the wheel right on. Lift it up, give it a wiggle, drop it in. Lock it in with your cotter pin. Look at this thing, it's leaning to one side, it's all crooked, looks pretty funny. Now here on the other side, we're just gonna pull the pin, out comes the bolt. Why do I feel like a NASCAR pit crew putting these wheels on right now? Lift it up, slide it on. Rotate it into place and slide in your pin. All right, so now we're starting to get somewhere. Slide this box out of the way. <gasps> I just noticed something, look at this. This must have gotten banged up in shipping. That's all bent. Wow, that really came in a bit. Look at that side. This side looks fine, this is all straight. This one, ugh, I'm gonna have to bend that back. Not a hard job, I actually did another video on that a while back. I'll have that link down below in the description. All you gotta do is take a C-clamp and just bend it back gently. What can you do? Things get banged up in shipping. The next step calls for installing the upper handle controls and attaching the cable. Check it out, I just emptied out this black bag and inside are four bolts, that's it. I mean, these are the only things you'll need to attach that handlebar. And it looks like we have some cable attachments and then some shear pins. Here's my upper handle controls. I'm gonna slide these into place and these do give you a little bit of a fight. There we go. Boy, am I glad I work out. I'm gonna bring you over here on this side. You're gonna wanna make sure you get your chute cable and everything untangled before you put this whole upper assembly into place. Slide in the bolts. There's one. Two. You know, I don't wanna name names here, but I have seen some other snowblower brands that only have one bolt here that hold the whole upper assembly into place. That makes for a really weak handlebar system. This one's pretty sturdy here with two. All right, let's crank her down. Snip off all these little zip ties. 
So now we're gonna take our cables and we're gonna connect them a little something like this, insert it through the hole and, and she hooks right on. Then over here, same thing, just slide it through the hole and into place. So check this out. It's got your heated handle grips right here. That's nice, that'll keep your hands toasty. And then over here, here's your lamp switch for your LED light strip here in the front. And then you even have a lock mechanism to hold down your auger so you can free up one hand to move your controls. This is all a step up from what their blowers used to have. Next on the instructions, it says to install the speed control connection. It's gonna be this guy right here. We're gonna take this wide end here, we're gonna install it into this control lever here, slide it all the way in, just like that and then raise the bar up. From here, there's this little piece with a hole in it right here. We're gonna take this end, stick it through, take your washer, put it on the opposite side, then take your cotter pin and drop it down the top. I'm gonna come in here with a set of pliers. This one's a little tougher than the others. Drop it into place, just like that. The lever now locks into place and moves up and down as it should. Next up, we got the chute assembly. And in order to shoot this video in the right direction with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button? Thank you, I appreciate it. We got these two little bolts right here. We're gonna take these out. From here, we're gonna watch our cable. We're gonna drop the chute right into place. Make sure everything lines up. Oh, that fell right in. Great, stick the bolts back in and lock that chute down. Take your 10 millimeter and a wrench, drive them on. Next here is installing the chute control lever. We're gonna grab this guy now. Now here on the bottom, there's a little plastic mount. You're gonna take your rod, stick it all the way through, all the way up to the chute. Over here, take this cotter pin, pull it out, stick in your chute control, and then carefully line everything up. There we go, she's in. All right, so let's give it a spin. Clankity, clankity. Boy, that thing really clicks into place. Now the reason it makes that clanky noise like that is so that way it stays in place while you're throwing the snow. If it didn't have that gear kind of locking things down, this chute would actually start a twist on you from side to side while you're trying to throw the snow and that can get really annoying. If you really want to loosen this up a little bit, you could take this nut here on the bottom and just bring it down or up just to adjust it, but I think we're gonna leave it as is. Now over here we have our deflector control, that's this lever right here, and as you can see it goes up and down depending on how far up or down I move the lever. Here's the next step, what we gotta do is install the skid shoes. For this what we're gonna need is two pencils. I'm gonna take this unit, lift it up, and drop the pencils on the ends, just like that. Now by setting those pencils on each side, that's actually gonna lift up the snowblower about a quarter of an inch. That's gonna save us any trouble with any bumps in the driveway, and that could also save some damage to your gearbox. I already stuck the bolts through, we're gonna drop that right into place. Washers on next, and then just simply tighten down your bolts. From here, I'm gonna hold the bolts from the back side with my fingers, and then just drive them right in. <laughs> Looks good on this side. Other side, bolts are in place, slide on the skid, washer on each, twist on your nuts, and drive them on. Now we can remove the pencils. And if you notice, there's a small little gap right there at the bottom, perfect. Now to wrap up the assembly here, this is our heated hand grip cable. We're gonna take these little clips here, I'm gonna mount them facing inward. I'm gonna put this guy here on this bar, slide in the cable, then come up here, slide this one onto this bar, and slide in the cable. Let's remove this plastic wrap here, let's try to get it all off in one piece. If you don't, it'll just kinda shred all over the place. Good, one little piece, right? There, good. And let's just remove it here on the other side. Can we get it all up in one piece? Yep. This is our choke lever. Let's not forget to pop this guy on. If we look, there's a thin side and a thick side. Thin side, thick side. Make sure you match them up. There we go, locked in. Looks good. And this here is our chute cleanout tool. This guy is gonna go right about there. Over here on our pull handle, they actually zip tied the key. We're gonna clip this guy off. This guy's gonna go right in here, pull off this protective sheet. So now we're gonna take this edge here and we're gonna straighten this bad boy out real quick. I got two pieces of cardboard. We're gonna stick them on the sides. That way we don't do any damage to the paint. I'm gonna take my C-clamp here. I'm gonna twist it down. And the larger the C-clamp you have, the better. Clamp it into place. And then from here, I'm just gonna bend it right back. Might take a couple tries. You might have to move it a little bit. Slide her up. That looks better. Now it's all about setting up the engine. So now for the final step on this snowblower, what we gotta do is put some oil in it and gas it up. Take out your dipstick. Doesn't look like there's much of anything in there. Usually they ship them with just a tiny bit of oil just to coat everything and protect it. This is why you have to add it once you get it. The instruction manual calls for 18 to 20 ounces of 5W30 full synthetic oil. Let's fill her up. Glug, 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 glug. That's 19 and uh, that's almost the whole bottle. Get a funnel in there and pour all that oil right in. Dipstick goes back in and let's throw some ethanol free gas in it. 
Real quick, for those wondering what that oil was down inside the box, there was a little bit of oil right here on this panel, oddly right in this spot. And then up here is your dipstick. So how did that oil get from there? I don't know. Maybe it was something with packaging. Maybe another snowblower was stacked on top and it was leaking down. That's the only thing I can think of, but there are no issues here underneath. This PowerSmart 24 inch gas snowblower is now fully assembled and ready to go. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go start this PowerSmart up. It's actually starting to snow right now. Key is in the on position. Turn to choke. Throttle is all the way up and prime it. Give it a pull. First pull, not bad. Well, this power smart started right up and ran beautifully. Now you might be wondering, JB, what's next? Well, an engine break-in would probably be the next appropriate step. I plan to run the engine outside for about a half an hour and then immediately change the oil. That's gonna get all the little fragments from the piston as it's breaking in out of the engine and that baby's gonna run clean. If you're looking to see how to set a snowblower up step-by-step step the right way, I actually did a video on a PowerSmart snowblower, and in that video, you'll be able to see all the intricate steps that I take to make that snowblower last a lifetime. I'll have that video linked down below in the description. As far as a review on this specific snowblower, that video will be coming out in just a few short weeks. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.